One of the most frequently asked questions I get is, should I buy the speed booster or just the straight adapter for my Canon EFM camera? And when I see this question asked on the forums, there are polar opposites opinions that come out. And you have one group of people that say, don't buy the speed booster because it ruins your quality. You're adding an extra piece of glass that wasn't designed to be there. Why would you do that and ruin the quality of the photos? You see another group of people that almost exclusively want to use the speed booster every chance they get, and they think it creates this really sort of magic kind of image that they just don't see in any of the other lenses that they have. And to be honest, previously I was kind of the camp that I thought, why would you add that extra piece of glass that isn't supposed to be there but since that time I've actually bought a speed booster myself and I actually now understand that there are situations where I would want to use the speed booster and other situations where I wouldn't want to use the speed booster and I will put uh, my best price links in the description down below that will take you through to uh, the adapters that I recommend and a number of the top suppliers so you can just go through and pick who's got the best price on either of these at any given time and essentially both of these the speed booster and the straight adapter are trying trying to accomplish kind of the same thing. They're trying to take an EF or EFS piece of glass and adapt it so it can be used on your EFM camera, like the Canon M50, the Canon M50 Mark II, the Canon M6 Mark II, and all the cameras in that series. These are both doing the same thing as far as passing a signal from the body of your camera onto the bigger lens. Now, normally you would have a smaller lens and the mount and the sort of the points that the camera uses Uses. You'll see the little pins in the camera or the little pins in the actual lens itself. Those line up and it sends the message back and forth so the camera body can talk to the lens. Because this is a bigger lens, it needs an adapter so that the pins line up. Also, these lenses are designed to work when they're further away from the sensor than the small lens. So the adapters simply just add that extra space that is required. So the lens sort of sits and functions similarly to the way it would on a previous DSLR camera. Now the speed booster is really only designed to work with EF lenses and EF lenses are full frame DSLR lenses. And the adapter is designed to work with either full frame lenses or EFS lenses. So if you see that the lens is an EF mount or EFS mount. Both of them will work with the adapter. With the speed booster, it's really designed to only work with the EF lenses, which are full frame lenses. Now, mind you, there are a number of EFS lenses, ones that are made for smaller sensor cameras. There are a number of those lenses that actually do work with the speed booster, but you sort of can't guarantee it. And you'd want to do your own research. If you had an EFS lens that you wanted to use with the speed booster, you'd want to make sure there was somebody out there that can could confirm for you that that actually does work with that lens. And the biggest difference between the adapter and the speed booster is the fact that the speed booster adds an extra lens to the equation. If you actually look at the adapter, there is no glass in there. I can just stick my finger through there. And if we look at the speed booster, there is actually a piece of glass in there. Both of these, as I said, do the same thing as far as just mounting turning this mount into something that can go on your camera, but this one has the extra piece of glass. Now, what that extra piece of glass does is it takes the full frame image that is coming out of the EF lens. And at the very last second, before it's gonna get to your camera sensor, it takes it and bends it all in and makes it fit on that sensor. This creates a couple of interesting situations. It creates some sort of positive things and it creates some sort of negative side effects. And the first thing it does by doing this is it concentrates the light. So basically what happens is there's a certain amount of light in the environment and there's a certain amount of light that is gonna go through this lens and hit your sensor. And if you think about it like the, the trick where people, you could take a magnifying glass and concentrate the light to burn an insect or start a fire or something like that. This is having a similar effect. It is taking that sort of larger image circle of light that is designed to go on a full frame sensor camera and it is concentrating it. And by concentrating it, it's actually making it brighter. And what this does is this actually makes this same lens using the speed booster is going to perform better in low light conditions than just using the adapter because it's going to collect the available light, concentrate it, and to your sensor, that image is going 
going to look brighter. That means that you are not going to have to turn your ISO up as high, which is a, a measure of how hard your camera is having to work to capture and see the image. It means you're going to get a cleaner and less grainy image. The other thing that this does is it actually creates a situation where you are going to get a more blurry background using the same lens than you would just using the adapter. So if you are using the uh, very popular Canon 50mm f1.8 and you are going through an adapter, you'll be shooting at the equivalent of f1.8 and you will get a certain amount of background blur. If you connect that to the speed booster, the way it works is you are going to get an effective f-stop of f1.2 and those numbers represent how wide the actual opening in the back of the lens opens and the wider that opens, the more blurry it gets. Now the lens isn't actually opening any wider in this situation. We're still dealing with this little lens in the speed booster in the concentration of light type concept. But what it does is it makes it seem like you've got an f-stop of f1.2, making it to the camera, it seems like that has made a larger opening, and the larger the opening, the more blurry the background is. And so when using this lens between these two, you are getting quite a noticeable, more blurry background by using the speed booster. Now the other side effect, which can potentially be considered desirable or undesirable, depending on your point of view. It is taking a piece of glass that Canon or Sigma or whoever the lens maker is has designed, and they spend a lot of time getting these optics right. And there's often a number of lenses in there. It can be eight lenses, can be 13 lenses, all different pieces of glass trying to bend that image and get it to perfectly land on the sensor. And then you put in this, which I think is maybe one or two pieces of glass, I'm not exactly sure, and at the last minute you're bending that image and trying to get it to stick onto that small sensor. In doing this, you are losing some detail, you are losing some clarity, you are losing some sharpness, and you are losing some contrast. Now. This, to me, doesn't actually necessarily capture a bad image. It captures a different image, which seems to have a more sort of creamy and smeary sort of background blur, much like a vintage lens would be. And the loss of detail in the picture can actually be quite attractive for portraits and certain types of photography or video where you're actually trying to get almost a vintage lens or sort of dreamlike look. So this does create a completely different sort of feel and vibe to your photo and video. And so the people that say it degrades the image quality are right, it does. But it does it in a way that I actually see as quite artistic and in some situations just flat out desirable. And the people out there that just love the speed booster and swear by the speed booster and you know wouldn't have it any other way, it's because they love those quality of images that are coming out of the camera when they're using the speed booster. The other thing the speed booster does is since it's getting that full frame image circle and it's taking and squeezing it down and it's sort of fitting it onto your smaller sensor, you're actually getting a wider field of view. So you might have a situation where normally with a, with a lens, you might be looking like the image capture would be from here to here, and then you put the speed booster on and you get sort of from here to here. So you're 50 millimeter lens, if you're just using the adapter, is actually going to be more zoomed in than it is using the speed booster. And in effect, the speed booster actually takes the 50 millimeter, Canon 50 millimeter lens and creates an image size or an image width and how much information is being captured that's quite similar to using a full frame mirrorless or mirrored camera. So that's why often people say, oh, you're getting that full frame look. You're not necessarily specifically getting a full frame look, but you are definitely getting all the information that the full frame camera is. You're essentially getting that same information and it's all fitting onto your smaller sensor. So you're getting a wider field of view. Now with the adapter, since there's no glass in there, it doesn't affect the image quality. So the image quality that this uh, Canon 50 millimeter lens was designed to capture, it's going to look exactly like that. 
since this is a full frame lens and it's designed to shoot a full frame image on a full frame sensor, the extra light and extra information just disappears inside the camera. It, it, it will just be this bigger image circle here that you could have a sort of full frame sensor in the middle of, but instead you have your crop sensor in the middle of. So you're just seeing less of the image that the actual lens is projecting into your camera. Since you are getting the lens used essentially the way it's designed to be used, you are getting a sharper uh, image, you're getting more detail in your image, you're gonna get more contrast. And so it is sort of a more true to the way the, the lens was designed and manufactured to operate. So who should buy the speed booster and who should buy the adapter? Now, the first thing I would say is if you've got a number of EF and EFS lenses, by owning both of these, this is really the cool thing. You turn every particularly EF, EF mount lens into two different lenses. So you're gonna get completely different looks, completely different field of views, completely different low light performance with this Canon 50 millimeter if you have both of these. You can choose between the two. The Speed Booster certainly isn't expensive for what it does, but it's much more expensive than just the straight adapter. So if you're somebody that's thinking about the Speed Booster, you buy the Speed Booster, and then for just very little more, 40 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that, you also get, you can get the adapter. So now all your lenses are doing double duty. So if you're only gonna pick one, who should buy the adapter and who should buy the Speed Booster? Well, I think if you are a pixel peeper, if you're obsessed with zooming in and seeing every detail, if you are interested in sort of really high contrast, punchy images, then you should definitely stick with the plain adapter. If you are interested in more low light performance, if you might be attracted to getting that wider angle, if you're interested in a sort of more blurry background, and you don't mind the sort of vintage style look, the lower contrast look that you get by using the Speed Booster, then you should definitely go for the Speed Booster. If you're interested in getting the best in photo and video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have, that's what I do on this channel. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification notification.